the work being done and uh, what's you know the Apache Open Office now? It's just basically IBM in disguise, basically just oh, yeah. converting the thing and using the brand, the very well known brand of oh, what office do you use instead of Office? Oh, Open Office, Open Office, Open Office, Authority, go Open Office, and they try to exploit that, latch onto that to have people thinking they're getting Open Office, but what they get is well, structurally it's the same car as before, it's the same underneath, it's the same engines, the same rendering, everything is the same, but on the outside, it's just part of the, it's an extension, it's a bit of a bonnet that's themed towards the, uh, as, as the Chinese team of IBM is making it. It's, it's just basically a, an extension or a component of, of Lotus, which of course is completely proprietary. Yeah. Uh, it's just, you know, and, and it sounds, it's nice to say, oh, it's open office or whatever, instead of saying, but basically, it's like, oh, if you want to have it, if you want an academic license to it, well, you have to buy Lotus with the mail server and everything else running SUSE, uh, but still proprietary. Um, and and it seems like basically they're just you know squeezing what's left from the trademark, just kind of saying open yeah. office. We want a trademark because people want to download it. We get a strong brand, and really yeah. using it for IBM's purposes. Not not necessarily that it's bad, but I want to make sure that many people would probably want to ensure that even if they don't want to buy into this you know this whole Kool Aid of IBM, because they're not going to deploy. Let's let's face it, they're not going to really deploy Lotus and and small businesses that look to save money, but they will opt usually for, I suppose, the KD, 2KD office switch or liberal office. But we want to make sure that the, the work being done by IBM on the uh, open office project is in fact portable to uh, legally and portable practically to the, you know, the other options that are free. I think, I think, you know, I, I think, I think that might actually, you know, work, and I, I'm not so worried about that. The, the thing though is that, you know, when you come to think of it, um, I would basically say that what they're trying to do with open office is, uh, morally questionable. I think that the history they're trying to, uh, rewrite is ludicrous. Um, but I think, you know, they have to be respected for who they are. And, you know, it's good to have an implementation out there. I just think that, they claiming that their open office org is uh, horse dung uh, by many measures, but it's fine if they really want to have it that way. Um, I have a good friend who basically says that the world is divided between the people who claim to be successors and the people who claim to have success. I rather prefer the, the latter part. Um, but this being said, I think that something is going to be very interesting and in fact, very beneficial for both the Apache Open Office project and the LibreOffice project. Uh, I think that what you will see is that when they're going to basically have Symphony back into their code, you're going to see an actual, I mean, a fundamental product difference, differentiation, differentiation. And I think that's very, very, very positive. It's very positive because it will help uh, stop the sour grapes, you know, because one will be like blue, you know, and it will have its own visual, its own visual identity, its own autonomy. It, you know, you will see it, you will try it, you will like it or dislike it. I, I don't know. I don't care, but you know, that you will know this is Apache, you know. You will know this is Apache uh, Open Office being really a symphony dump, but you will know it's different. And then the LibreOffice project, on the other hand, is very busy uh, rewriting its own interface and coming up with something on its own. I don't know if you see that, but you know, next week we're basically releasing LibreOffice 3.6, mm -hmm. and you will see we have a brand new splash screen, we have a brand new, uh, you know, visual. Uh, styles and visual elements in the interface and what you're going to see is that you're going to continue seeing you know more and more of these mm -hmm. improvements. You're targeting Android as well I believe. Yes, yes yeah. and what you Which will see in it is, is Android yeah. stuff so you know in the end I think you will have enough differentiation that the uh, relationship uh, is, is actually very peaceful. Um, if you ask me uh, you know I told you, I think, to claim that these guys are open office or is horse 
done. And the reason, and it's not, you know, this is not the Document Foundation speaking here. This is just me. Uh -huh. But I can tell you the reason that these guys are not the Apache Open, they're, they're not the Open Office Org project is that I've been investing and I've been contributing to the Open Office Org project myself for over 10 years. And I know quite a lot of people who have been contributing there and they're just not there. They're gone. Uh -huh. And yeah. we've been we've been gone for a long time. So they got the brand, uh, they got a few engineers, and uh, when I'm saying a few, I'm saying, you know, like what, three, four guys uh, out of the 100 persons that were working in Hamburg? It's gone. It's, it's, it's dead. I mean, you know, start afresh. But don't tell me you're... Don't tell me you're my mother because I know you're not my mother. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, I'm to, to, to end it now, I, I'm, I'm trying to rush things to because uh, I have a few more things I want to cover and maybe try and fit it within an hour. Um, I, I do think that the next challenge will be also trying to cope with the uh, moving to office-based, uh, sorry, web-based office uh, suites. Uh, and I, I just want to ask you very briefly: Is it, is it true, based on, based on reports, I believe that uh, Open Office, sorry, LibreOffice was at least thinking about doing something office-based prior to that? Oracle, there was some rumors maybe Oracle wants to do something web-based. I don't think anything happened out of that. But uh, is there any such move? Or yes, uh, yes, ten times yes. Uh, in fact, the Document Foundation has been. Uh, basically uh, starting the work on LibreOffice Online. And LibreOffice Online is at the prototype stage, um, but it is, at this stage even, the most complete web-based office suite mm -hmm. uh, in the market. Mm -hmm. We are not, and, and so uh, just to even let you know, because we, we, had, we, we have demos and all that, um, what we're doing here is it's not a good... Sorry? Um, can you, uh, okay, carry on. Um, you know, what we're targeting is not Google Docs. What we're targeting is not, uh, you know, what Oracle wanted to do with their, you know, cloud office suite. But what we're definitely targeting is the Microsoft Office 365 thing, mm -hmm. where people need to basically have feature stuff and a full collaborative suite. And that is something you're going to see. I think at this stage, uh, it's the it's the pace of development uh, that is basically that we're trying to uh, accelerate with more resources. Yeah. So, oh. but we definitely start to work on it. How is it architecture? Is it actually a sort of a virtualized or sort of remote access type thing? Like uh, I think Gael Duval, the founder of Mandrake at the time, was trying to do something such as that with. I think he based it not on Mandriva, but on uh, it's, for some reason. But it wasn't really taking off. And it, it, what was it called? Uh, uh, Altio. Yeah, it's, Altio. Yeah, it's, it's, it's still around, but I think it's changed a bit. It's no, it's. I've, I've, it, I, I think they're doing some good business. Um, I think they they they're settling in uh, the landscape now. Uh, but um, uh, it will basically be uh, LibreOffice Nine is. Uh, it basically it runs into your browser and it's an HTML native HTML five application, and it's being powered, indeed, by a server, which is really LibreOffice and Stereos. Okay, okay. All right, so it's basically using the rendering engines and everything else at the back. So you're using free software on the server, and uh, mm -hmm. LGPL is not actually a fair, so I suppose it's, yeah, I suppose as long as you release the source code as part of the mainstream, yeah. you know, the native, yeah. So it is pretty much free software over the network as well. Even Absolutely. though you cannot really control what's installed on the servers, you can only ask for, you know, please change this, change that, uh, yeah. to the latest version or so on. So, uh, I, I'm pretty positive on, on I, I wrote an article a couple of days ago about the, uh, statistics, statistics coming out about the usage of, uh, what I call Vista 7. It's, you know, Windows 7. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's in large businesses, the adoption after three years is only 20% of businesses. It's, it's absolutely horrible. And it doesn't surprise me. The propaganda was very good at saying, oh, it's a great success. Yeah, compared to Vista, it is a success. Um, but the it seems to me like Windows in general, there is another study coming out just now, the share of Windows is falling, and so the monopoly, which is hinged upon Windows, I mean, franchise's office, of course, will suffer tremendously from the web, from tablets, from phones, and people can now access on quick office and things like that. I have an mm. office suite on my tablet. So, you know, I'm seeing that, Office is becoming like not necessary. It's not like you know people 
people will give you um, Google URLs for documents or they will pass you an email and even if they pass you an OXML file, uh, right. very often you will find that the processes within the 